Stream Avatars came out with a lot of updates since our last tutorial. So in today's Stream Avatars video, we're going to be going step by step on how to set it up for your own stream. In today's video, I'm going to be using OBS Studio, but we'll be going over some fixes for Mac users or if you're using Streamlabs as well. All right, so hopping in, we're going to start in the general tab and we're going to configure some settings. So who can spawn is going to dictate who you're going to see avatars for. So if you select everyone, anybody that's in your stream is going to be able to show an avatar. I usually set this to followers so you don't have random people with an avatar and gives them an incentive to follow. And in this next drop down, you have the option of in chat or active chatters. So anybody that's a follower in chat will have an avatar at the bottom of the screen but if you choose active chatters this corresponds to viewer despawn timer so if a chatter stops chatting for whatever limit you set for this so in this case it's 360 seconds that chatter's avatar will disappear until he chats again and then limit viewer spawned you can set the limit of how many avatars are on the screen and then the avatars enabled profile this is just if you uh create different profiles for the settings that you have going on to window settings when launching the stream avatars application you can set which monitor it launches on so if you drag this to another monitor you can press set this monitor and it's going to automatically spawn on top of that monitor so resolution window is that just the resolution in, in which your window is so so it's going to determine the size of your stream avatars application window so you can change that if you need it smaller or bigger you can lock that resolution if you want to and then you can also have it as full screen as well if you want stream avatars to launch automatically you can always check this button if you want your avatars to have chat bubbles when they type in chat you can enable this you can also set a cooldown. So if you don't want a bubble to appear for every chat that they send, you can set a cooldown for that. And then chat bubble font. Of course, you can pick the font for that chat bubble as well. And if you would a custom sound for the chat bubbles that spawn, you can set that and then adjust the volume. You can set various cooldowns and volume limits so it doesn't, you don't have people spamming the same command. So under events, you have multiple events such as follow, donations, and subs. And this basically allows your avatars to react to those events. So you can enable them or disable them if you want to. You can make a own custom message. And then for instance, if somebody follows you, command that's automatically going to play is going to be mass dance. So every time somebody follows the avatars on the bottom of the screen will be dancing. So you can set different commands to happen using your bot commands. You can type whatever one you want, but by default, it's going to be mass dance for a majority of them. So feel free to customize this going down the data settings. You can enable cloud saving. And as well, if you mess something up, you can always delete everything and then start from scratch. And then in the viewer extension panel, this is going to be the extension on the bottom of your Twitch chat, or sometimes it's overlaid on your stream as well. Depending on what you choose, you can configure your specific settings and you can set custom messages as well. But going into the login details, there's been some updates to this. But if you stream on different platforms at the same time, you can now allow multi-platform streams. So I've already authorized my Twitch account. I'm going to allow multi-platform streaming and then I'm going to add this platform. Now, if I want to stream on YouTube as well, I'm going to go ahead and connect to that account. And to do this, you need to choose your streaming platform and then channel authorization. I'm going to choose platform login and then the same thing for the bot authorization. I just use the same account. I'm not really trying to manage two different accounts. So I always use the same same account as my channel authorization. And then once everything's connected, you should see these green check marks. Now, I just did have an issue where my bot authorization was enabled, but my channel authorization wasn't. So I went ahead and pressed this test button. Then it said there was an error. Then after that, I just reconnected and it worked fine. So now that we have YouTube and Twitch both enabled, when we stream and launch this application, we're going to see chatters from both Twitch and YouTube on the bottom of the screen now. So in this example, I'm only using Twitch and YouTube, but if you have a DLive, Facebook, Trovo, or Glimish, that all works as well. Now on the bot commands list, there was a lot of them, so you're going to have to go through them yourself and to play around with some just to get the feel of it. But I'll go ahead and show you some of the chatters favorites. This one is called Mass Bomb. If you enter the command, it's going to send a whole bunch of bombs on the screen and it's going to basically just blow everybody up. <laughs> oh my God. Another favorite is called Mass Dance. So when you do the command Mass Dance, all the avatars on the bottom of the screen will dance. And of course, this is probably the best one. This one is called Battle Royale. All the avatars that are active will be dropped down the screen by an airplane or whatever image you pick. And then they'll all engage into a Battle Royale until there's only one left standing. So yeah, just play around with them. I know there are a few added ones such as screensaver and then I believe roulette as well. In mini games, you can configure the specifics of each of these games your chatters can play. So for example, in the boss battle, you can have custom bosses depending on which packs you downloaded or you can even make your own and you can basically fine tune this to anything you want. So if you want a higher reward, you can increase this and you can specify timer intervals for people to attack. Under the Steam Workshop, this is where we're going to be able to find our packs for stream avatars. So in a fresh install, you're not going to have any avatars to choose from. All you have to do is click on this download button and then press continue and just wait a few seconds and you'll get a successful download window. Now avatars and gears I really haven't touched. There are some packs in the Steam Workshop like Blockman is a really good one that comes with different blocks and different gears for these avatars. So by default, your chatters can pick different gears or buy different gear for your Blockman depending on how active they are in the stream. And then in avatars and gears, if you only want specific gears for that character, you can choose which ones to enable or disable. In sounds, you're able to import sounds. So you can use them in your different mini games, such as your boss battle. You can have custom sounds imported into that. You're just going to need to convert them into the right format, which a quick Google search should help you out. And then in the background, you can create your own background as well. 
You can use different assets for backgrounds. But if you go back to the Steam Workshop again, there are some good packs you can download, such as the Mario Maker background grass, which has a bunch of different assets so you can create your own background as well. You just have to sift through the Steam Workshop because there's a lot of different back background packs you can choose from, such as the background pack three or even the background pack one. Makes it super simple to just drag and drop. Under name tags, you can create custom name tags. So if you create a new name for one, then adjust your parameters to the way you need it. You can make different name tags as well and have specific colors for followers and then a different one for subscribers if you're looking to do that too. Now down on shop editing, this is where we can set costs for chatters to buy different avatars or maybe certain gear for those avatars. You can change the cost amount for each one, or you can determine who can actually use those avatars and gear. And then the name tags as well, like we said before, all your custom name tags will be over here. So you can set certain name tags for certain tiers. Then the last settings we can choose from is user editing. Here we can choose our spawning defaults. So if you want a follower to be a specific avatar, you can choose the avatar right here. And then every time you get a new follower, this is gonna be the default spawn avatar for them. And then when they engage in chat, uh, defeat bosses, or win battle royales, you can get gold and buy gear or buy different avatars. And the same thing with the name tag. If you set up a follower name tag, you can choose this, and then this will be the, the default for all followers. And then of course you can do this for subs and moderators as well. And then scrolling down a bit, if you want to set everybody back to their spawning defaults, you can press the refresh button, resetting the leaderboard, you can clear it. And if you want to get rid of everybody's gold, you can also clear currency. And then the user list sections, you click on blacklist common bots. It's going to add a bunch of known bots to this list so they won't spawn as avatars in your channel. And then of course, delete user data. If you want to start from ground zero again, you can press this button and it'll delete everything. So we got our stream avatar set up. Now, how do we actually get it into our OBS? We're going to start by pressing the connect button and then you should see this active screen with avatars on the bottom. Instead of OBS, we're going to add a new source and we're going to go over to game capture. You can name your new source, whatever you want. And then under mode, we're going to use capture specific window. And then the window we choose is stream avatars. And then we have to make sure to allow transparency. And then you can choose capture cursor or not. I usually choose not to. And then you can press OK. You can drag your stream avatars wherever you need to to make it fit your screen. Now, if I add a color source real quick, you can see that the original stream avatars background is gone. If you don't click allow transparencies, then you're going to see all this extra info on your stream. So make sure that's enabled. If for some reason, you don't have a game capture source or allowing transparency doesn't work for you. Back inside the stream avatars dashboard, we're going to click on quick access and then background color. From here, you want to pick a green color and it's going to change the background for you. So now you see a green background for your stream avatars. And as before, if you don't have a game capture, let me go ahead and remove this real quick. We can add a different source called window capture instead. From the window capture, we're going to make sure stream avatars is selected. You're going to make sure you choose the stream avatars window. And then the windows match priority, we're going to make sure window title must match just so it only chooses stream avatars the next time we boot this up. You go ahead and press OK. Now the window is a little bit small. That's because it's small on the screen as well. So we can always enlarge this. So I'm going to make it actual size and then that should fix it. But here's the actual size. Now using this method, if you're using Windows Capture, you have to make sure the windows is not minimized. And then from here, in order to get rid of the green background, we're going to right click go over to filters, add a new filter. It's going to be called chroma key. Go ahead and click OK. By default, it should take away the green background. But if it doesn't, go ahead and hide the filter. Go over to key color type and go over to custom. After that, press select color and then choose pick screen color. From here, just click anywhere on the green and that's going to be the color at chromas. So go ahead and press OK and then re-enable the chroma key and you should be good to go. Now this method works, but there are some issues. As you can see, this Donkey Kong was green. Now it blends in with the background. So some of the avatars you downloaded that have a green hint to it or green gear associated with it, they're not going to appear as they would be during game capture. But this is a nice workaround in case you don't have the game capture method or if you don't have that allow transparency option. And then last but not least, you have this quick access panel where you can configure your avatars so you can make them smaller, you can make them bigger, you can make the size of the names bigger, or you can make them small as well. Then if you have chat bubbles enabled, you can make the chat bubbles bigger or smaller as well. Using this hand icon, you can pick up different avatars. And if you look under OBS, it does exactly what you're doing on the actual stream avatars application and the gift options. You can gift chatters different things. So if you choose the chatter, you can change your avatar if you wanted to or gift him different currencies or gear and the sound options. You can choose the master volume for different sounds that you inputted. Going over to the bomb, you can drop bombs manually and just to create some havoc using the sling. You can sling avatars across the map if you wanted to using the block options. You can make a makeshift background if you wanted to. So you can create ladders for your avatars to walk up, create different kind of spawn zones, and then you can also clear it as well. Next one is the spawn avatars. You can manually spawn different avatars. These are just pretty much bot avatars if you want to fill the screen. And then you can right click them to make them disappear as well. Next one is the star. So you can unleash stars. 
This will give your avatars points depending on who gets them. And then the last one, you have the option of pinning avatars on the screen as well. All right, so that was some basics. Hopefully it helped you out. I know in the last tutorial, there was a few Mac users and Streamlabs users. So hopefully the window capture method will help you out so you can get your stream avatars up and running. We do a lot of tips to help better your stream. So if you don't want to miss out, make sure to subscribe. See you next time.